Hey, thanks for stopping by. My name's Thomas. This is Zarbo Audio Projects. And this is an interview of Ariel from the Speaker Design Competition in Dayton, Ohio, put on by Parts Express 2025. First of all, I have to apologize for the audio quality. It's not real good. There's a lot of noise in the background and I didn't have this microphone yet. If I would have had this, it would have been a different story, but this actually got delivered as I was in Dayton. <laughs> at this event, so I apologize. I did the best I could to clean the audio up. It's presentable, but it's it's not good, so I'm sorry about that. You can still leave a nasty comment if you want to. I'll understand, but I did the best I could. But even though the audio is not great, I still wanted to give this interview to you because uh, once I saw these speakers that they were 3D printed, I said, I gotta talk to this guy a little bit more because the drivers themselves are not 3D printed, but literally everything else, the entire enclosure, was 3D printed and assembled. And um, so after Ariel, his name, presented uh, his speakers and we listened to him, he came back and was sitting right next to me. So I started to talk to him. And I knew I had to uh, get a little interview and ask him more about these speakers. All right, so we're at the Parts Express Speaker Design Competition 2025. And I'm here with Ariel and his very unique speakers, which are, what are these called again? So I call them Venus because I'm a big space nut. But uh, just a uh, two-way. Speaker. Regular old two-way loudspeaker. Okay, that is a lot because these are interesting and unique. I saw you when you were walking in with these, and I saw this sphere at the back, and I thought, well, what is going on with that? Now you can see as you look at it that it's probably 3D printed. So there's your first hint. These are a little different. Tell us a little bit about all of this going on here. Yeah, so it was mainly a question of uh, what things can you do with a different way of making speakers compared to what's been done before. As you noted, it's a, it's a spherical woofer acoustic chamber, so there's no internal corners to diffract and reflect weird waves off of. Uh, it gives the opportunity to mount passive radiators to the side. It all fits fairly well together as well as kind of, you see on that front bath, it's a curved shape, which would normally, especially in the DIY space, that's a lot of work with, uh, with routing tools, uh, or with, uh, if you're fairly great, with a chisel and hand. <laughs> or a belt sander. Oh, yes. And a death wish, yes. So, these are cool looking. If you look at them from the front, you can see the front's curved this way, curved this way, or curved this way, but even that curve isn't symmetrical. Got lines coming this way, and that curve is sort of focused here. It's not something like I like to look at speakers and say, How can I duplicate this with wood? I know I could not duplicate this at all. This is just so far beyond what's possible. But so, the, 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 the secret behind this is these are 3D printed. Now, I have printed little things out of my 3D printer, I knew when it comes to that, but you've got different layers, they look like yeah. gray lines. So you were explaining me a little bit about the 3D printer that you use and how that happened. Can you explain a little bit about how you did that? Yeah, so I used the uh, Prusa XL, which uses multiple tool heads. So there was a lighter wood tool head, a darker one, and then this uh, gold inlay. And I just manually told the printer, you know, at these layers cut in with uh, the brown, and these layer, you know, in this area cut in with the uh, with the gold. But the uh, software sliced it, programmed it, and set it all up to run that way. Well, that's really cool. Looking. I mean, thank you. It's, when you talk about speakers with like an inlay of veneer and yeah. wood and then bronze or something like that, or gold, that's the look you got with this thing. Yeah. It's so cool. Looking. And I, I picked it up to move it here as an area. They're not super crazy heavy. If this was made out of wood, this would be a lot heavier. Yes. So these yeah. are like, my back's not crying out for me. Um, you got the crossover at the bottom. Yep. And terminals down there. And this the sphere is where the Wolfram action is going on. Now that's a is that an eight-inch reference series? Uh, that is the Sig One Eighty. So that's actually a six and a half inch, but it looks oh, okay. eight because the passive radiators are from the RSS, and I think those are eight-inch passives. Okay. Yeah. So this was my first time messing around with passive radiators. Uh, there's definitely room for improvement on them. I think I perhaps oversized, you know, two eight inch woofers going, two eight inch passive radiators going, a single six and a half inch woofer might have been a bit, a bit bold. But uh, it ended up sounding, uh, sounding good to me. So. Well, you might have 
more excursion than you need on the past of that year, so I don't think there's nothing that's wrong. It's yeah. just you're giving more opportunity than you need. These are amazing. Um, Thank you. They caught my eye, and I just wanted to like give you a chance to explain to maybe some folks out there who are getting into 3D printing. Don't know how far it can be taken. Well, it could be taken very far. Yeah, absolutely. I'd say certainly if you are, you know, if you're more, more into the carpentry side of things, where you want to dip a bit into the 3D printing, I'd say probably the lowest hanging fruit is the front half. I mean, that is something that normally you don't see. Asymmetric curvature, and so you're getting up into the five, six figure speakers. But this will find me fifty, sixty dollars of plastic, make your nice wooden box, and then design a baffle to print, and you can adhere that to the front or magnetize it to the front. Exactly. When you said that, that, that really struck me because, like a lot of guys, will do a tweeter, they'll, they'll buy a wave guide, you know, a wave guide allows you to lower the frequency of the tweeter uh, outputs, and you can cross over a little bit lower with less distortion. You can incorporate that way back into, into the bathroom. You can 3D print that and adhere that to your traditionally constructed box and you've got something kind of cool. But yeah. this is definitely something that's going to be happening more and more, I'm sure, because one of the other contestants had a, had a flower, some flower thing, yes. 3D element. But this, is, this entire cabinet is all 3D printed. So I think that's as far as I'm going to That's kind of a first. So. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, you know, right now in the world, it's kind of two places of 3D printing. There's what goes to just 3D print the traditional cabinet, which I think is you know, perhaps you're losing out on the advantages you get from 3D printing, which is you know round, broad corners. If you're just going to copy the same things, you're not going to beat out the water. Uh, and then on the very high end, the cheapest 3D printer I know of, or 3D printed speaker I know of on a professional hi-fi scale is I think Hylixia, I want to say around like 25,000, 20,000 pound mark. And so this is just aiming, you know, for $700, let's make a $1,000, $1,000, $1,500 the speaker. Yeah. Well, you pull that off, and like I said, with 3D printing, you can make things in such a way that they can fill it with other material to add, create, yeah. create added density. Absolutely. When you're talking about sand or blood or something. Yeah, so for background, I work as a structural engineer. One benefit you can do with, you know, let's say sand, water versus epoxy is that as vibration moves through the structure, it causes the sand or water to move, bounces them around. In order to move something, you put energy into it. So by making a particle of sand bounce up and down, you've robbed vibration of energy to do that. It's, so it's a way to dampen uh, a structure. We do that all the time in test structures or beams and all that jazz. So, while this does not do that, it's all air fed. Um, it might consider the more if it was for sand and water. Uh, maybe next year we'll see what uh, that kind of sounds like. Well, that's cool. So, you know, it's really a learning process. The problem with uh, plastic is that, you know, when you print something at high, high temperature, it's going to change shape as it cools down. So the best of intentions from uh, your cat, well, it's going to work a bit. Um, and the tricky bit is figuring out where do you put the joints such that that work matters the least. Um, All right, you're so really engineering this stuff. <laughs> okay, I can see a little bit here about how it's put together with the, with the dump. Yeah. The mortise and tenons here. So you think you'll come back next year and then bring another 3D printed creation? I think so. Yeah. So it's such a good yeah. for a first try and yeah. a bunch of firsts. Nice job. Thank I, you so I, much. I really enjoyed seeing it. Thanks for coming.